Are you a fan of TikTok? I'll confess that I am not, uh, for many reasons that are both personal as well as professional. But I think that the reasons I don't like it professionally are kind of relevant to the future of the company and means that they have a big problem in their future. What up? I'm Drex. I'm a flow and movement artist from Washington, D.C. And importantly, I am also a content creator. And I have some really big feels about TikTok that I want to share with y'all. But I also have a mission today. Uh, I've rented out the dance studio and I have a piece that I'm working on. So how about you come walk with me as I start on that mission and I talk with you a little bit about what my issues are with TikTok and why I think they're important. Before we dive in though, I do want to just give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Fire Mecca, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing businesses and what they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And special thanks to non-business friends of the channel, Johnny Howard, Lane Machinsky, and Becca Beckonen. Thank you all so very much for your support for my work and my mission. All right, so, um, I lied just a second ago. I don't technically live in Washington, D.C. I live a couple hundred feet over the state line in Maryland instead, specifically on the border of Tacoma Park and Silver Spring. The studio that I'm heading to is in downtown Tacoma Park itself. So I have a little bit of a hike ahead of me to get down there, which just means that I've got more time to talk with you all. This intersection is so sketchy. Thank you. All right, so I've been creating content online now for close to a decade and a half. I started out primarily on YouTube, but I've also been doing a lot of stuff on Instagram for the past few years as well. I've found both of them to be interesting platforms as a content creator. And I will also say that I am that like, what, 1% of the world that doesn't like TikTok. I've used it. I post stuff to it. I just don't like it. And for me personally, it's just not a good platform. I don't like the fact that there's audio by default. I always feel embarrassed when I bring up a video when I'm in the company of others. Um, it also just kind of encourages a kind of shallow content that like, you know, I, I realize that that's a feature and not a bug for many people, but like, I really like to get deep into stuff rather than just have something pop up that momentarily entertains me in terms of the content that I like. So TikTok has really just really never been a good fit for me, unfortunately. But that is not why, or at least not completely why, I think the platform has some trouble ahead of it. That has more to do with its relationship with its creators. Okay, so as a YouTuber, there's several different ways that I make a living. That is, several different income streams that I have. One of those, and probably the first type of income stream that YouTubers encountered on the platform, uh, was the advent of revenue sharing. That is the ads that pop up on YouTube videos. Uh, Google shares about half of the ad revenue with you if you reach a certain threshold of engagement with your videos. And this works out really well for both YouTube as well as for the creators. Um, basically, it is an incentive for you to keep on producing content for the platform to keep getting people coming on and checking it out. It also is great for YouTube because it means that these creators are people with whom their audience have a relationship and they're going to come back for repeat business, right? Now, the thing is, it's super duper easy when posting ads on YouTube to know whose channel is responsible for getting those eyeballs to it. Like, you know, if, if you get an ad that goes over the pre-roll of your video, then you know they were there to watch your video, right? But with TikTok and other swipeable micro content platforms, that's a lot harder. Like as somebody is swiping through videos, if they happen across an ad in between two of them, who should get the credit for ha having delivered that ad? Should it be the person whose video was just swiped off of? Maybe that swipe represented somebody trying to move on to the next thing, having enjoyed the last video, or maybe that swipe represented trying to get off of that video because they didn't like it. It's kind of hard to measure these things. So TikTok's answer to this has been to basically set up what it calls a creator fund. This is basically just like a static pool of money that they pay out to creators every month based upon the number of views and engagement that they get on their videos, which, you know, this is actually a savvy answer to this question. But there's one huge problem. That creator fund is static. 
Like in sharing ad revenue, YouTube actually has a really easy and understandable solution to getting its creators to keep on creating for them. You know, by splitting their ad revenue, it means that as the views for the platform go up, the creators inevitably get a slice of that pie. That doesn't happen with the TikTok creator fund, unfortunately, though. As it stands right now, it's just a static fund that, you know, as TikTok's revenues increase, the fund doesn't seem to in commensurate amounts. All right, so I usually ride my bike down to downtown Tacoma Park, and there's only one bike available here at the bike stalls. That always makes me nervous because, uh, Generally speaking, there's a pretty good chance then that uh, the bike is broken or unable to be checked out. So let's see if I am lucky today. Hey, I'm lucky today. All right, it would be kind of dangerous for me to keep on talking to the camera as I bike down. So instead, I will just give you a view part of the way down and catch back up with you at the bottom, yeah? All right, made it down to downtown Tacoma Park. That bike was janky AF. Now I've got a couple blocks to walk to the studio. Okay, so why is it a problem if the creator fund doesn't grow? Well, basically because as you get more creators on the platform, the amount of money that any one of them can make off of their videos decreases. That means that like you could be pulling in just as many views, but you're gonna see your income steadily go down. And that becomes a disincentive after a while for people making more content. Now, a lot of you may be asking, what's the big deal with that? Surely with a platform as popular as TikTok, they can just get more creators coming in all the time and, you know, learning the ropes for the first time themselves. And yes, that can indeed happen. But, and this is a big but, if the platform eventually gets a reputation for being unfriendly to creators, they're going to have problems keeping people on. YouTube had this problem with the adpocalypse just a couple of years ago, and it's still trying to recover its reputation. There are other options out there for creators other than TikTok. In fact, many of the TikTok creators that I follow have started up YouTube channels specifically so that they have other options. And you know, I hate to say it, but I think TikTok has a lot of these problems built into the very design of the product that it's offering. Like, the whole unique value proposition of the platform is that it's going to give you quick, easy, and disposable content. It's almost like taking the idea behind a dating app and throwing it behind content. Everything is rapidly swipeable so you can get off of whatever you don't like and hopefully closer to the things that you do. It's kind of the gamification of content rather than, say, voluntarily deciding you're going to click on a particular thing like you would on YouTube. So what happens if a platform that is built around creating disposable content suddenly runs dry of content? Well, people are going to stop using it. So at some point, TikTok is going to have to do something to make itself a more hospitable platform for creators. And when that happens, it's going to be changes that many of the end users are not going to like. After all, any choice that they make that gives the creators more control inevitably takes some control away from the audience. That is a spectrum that goes back and forth. This is a binary, and it's going to be very, very hard for them to come up with solutions that are, give more power to both parties. Cool, so I'm at the studio, so I'm going to go ahead and mask up right quick. People that watch the videos that I shoot at this studio are always asking me why I'm wearing a mask indoors, and this is the answer, because they require me to. Sweet. Cool. So I got an hour to work with in here and a piece that I'm working on choreographing. So I will show you some highlights from that and then I'll go ahead and wrap things up as I'm heading home.
Well, it's about an hour later and I figure I'm at least a half a liter uh, lighter of water inside, so I'm doing my best to put it back. So let's talk some more shop. So it should probably surprise nobody that I, as a content creator, believe very highly in the importance of content and, of course, the, important, the importance of taking care of people that create it. And right now, I feel like TikTok is basically engaged in a bit of a wager. It thinks that people will take validation as a form of payment, that getting millions of views very, very easily is going to wind up meaning more to people than getting like actually paid for it. And a lot of people are gonna discover the hard way the same thing that I discovered about a decade ago. You cannot eat likes or views. Not that it's a bad thing if, you know, somebody who has a regular old day job finds themselves suddenly an internet celebrity when they post the right TikTok. That feels good and there's no reason that it shouldn't. But for most content creators, they are going to have to make a choice at a certain point between dedicating their time to creating content versus dedicating their time to doing something that is going to feed them or pay the rent. And if TikTok can't do the job for them, they're gonna find something else. But what do you think? Am I making a mountain out of a molehill here? Are there plenty of people that are making a good living on TikTok and I'm just not seeing it? Or am I just an old fuddy-duddy who can't get behind the changing times? Leave me your comments and let me know what you think. Also, if you got anything out of this video, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe to keep the conversation going and, of course, to help my channel grow. And if you just happen to be stopping by and know nothing about the flow arts, please check out some of my other videos because uh, I teach stuff that is very, very good for your body and your brain. And uh, if you find something that you like there, so much the better for everybody. This video would not be possible were it not for the kind support of all of these wonderful people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the wonderful people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. If you like these videos that I create and you'd like to sign up to support them, you can do so by heading on over to patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi and signing up. There you can get access to a whole host of awesome rewards, and even better, you'll be helping me out in my mission to bring poi spinning and flow arts to the wider world. Check that out, please and thank you. If you like this video and you'd like to check out more like it, I will leave a link to a playlist of other vlogs that I've done down in the description as well as up on screen if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, the algorithm also thinks that you'll like this top video here, so you might want to give that a look too. Thank you so much for watching, have a good one, and I will see you with a new video on Wednesday. Take care. Peace.